Late last night, a plane deporting two Sri Lankans and their children back to Sri Lanka was forced to land in Darwin due to a court injunction in the latest bid to allow this family to stay in Australia. Here's the news coverage of this story. This is the moment a young family en route to an uncertain future back in Sri Lanka touches down in Darwin. Shanghai in the night from Melbourne Detention Centre and onto a plane. Within about nine minutes um, and they were gone. A dramatic mid-air phone call, a judge blocks their deportation, buying precious hours to pursue a last-ditch legal bid to stay on Australian soil. I miss you. Priya, her husband Adez and their two Australian-born daughters have been held in detention since March 2018, after officials removed them from their home in the small central Queensland town of Billawilla, after Priya's temporary bridging visa expired. The High Court previously rejected their appeal to remain in Australia, despite supporters voicing concerns for their safety if they return to Sri Lanka. Now, we have tried everything uh, to stop this family uh, from being taken away. The family's legal team concedes Priya and Adez's personal case is lost, but say their youngest daughter is the only member of the family to not have a protection visa claim assessed. Their lawyer also arguing the two-year-old's application has not been referred to Immigration Minister David Coleman for his personal consideration, and the failure to do so involves legal unreasonableness. I think it's um, hard to argue that her being removed from her parents is in her best interest. The high-profile case mounting pressure on the minister to step in. The minister or the prime minister today, under the Migration Act, could just exercise their power, bring this to an end and give this family and particularly their children some certainty, some safety and allow them to go home to Bilawila. The government standing firm. This family must go. I would like the family to accept that they are not refugees, that they're not owed protection by our, by our country. Lawyer Christopher Tran, representing Minister Coleman, says the application was made on a merely technical basis and is manifestly hopeless, but agreed to extend the injunction. Judge Morty Bromberg didn't comment on the merits of the application, but said it should be heard. The Immigration Minister has been blocked from removing the child and her family until Wednesday 4pm. The case will return to the Federal Court that morning. You've got to take all the wins that you can. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is a tiny one. Andrea Crothers, Sky News, Melbourne. All right, now let me give you some facts. These facts seem to be thin on the ground in much of the media's coverage about this family today and recently. First up, the adult male and adult female, the mum and dad of the young children you've seen in the background material I've just put to air, they arrived illegally into Australia on a boat after paying people smugglers. The father, he arrived first at Christmas Island in 2012 and the mother arrived later at Cocos Island in 2013. In the words of the official media release dated in December last year from the Home Affairs Minister, this couple, and I quote, met and married in Australia. They then had two children in Australia and did so in the full knowledge that they had no right to remain in Australia. Of course, this was during the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd years when over 50,000 people arrived illegally by boat. And like this couple, a good many of them remain in Australia today testing our legal system with appeal after appeal in the hope that eventually... They'll wear down the decision makers or the Australian public and be allowed to stay. Like this couple, many of them now have children who were born in Australia. And the children are often then used to carry the legal case for the right of the parents to stay when all other avenues have been exhausted. Meaning, after the parents have been assessed and found not to be refugees. But let's deal with the application by the parents for refugee status which they lodged after arriving separately, as I said, by boat. After a six-year-long legal battle and seven court cases, the mother and father were both found not to be refugees. In the instance of the father, his application for protection under the UN Refugee Convention was rejected by the Immigration Department first, then the Refugee Appeals Tribunal rejected his appeal. That rejection was then upheld in the Federal Magistrates Court in July 2014, then again later in the full Federal Court in November 2014. 
His argument that he was a refugee went all the way to the High Court of Australia and it was rejected yet again in June 2015. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, it couldn't be any clearer than that. The mother's circumstances were not dissimilar and she was found not to engage Australia's protection obligations by the Department of Immigration in 2016. In 2017, the Immigration Assessment Authority reaffirmed that refusal. From then, the family became unlawful non-citizens and should have departed Australia. Their failure to do so meant that they were taken into detention for removal. I'll refer here again to the specifics of the Minister's media statement from December last year where it says, after agreeing to voluntarily leave the country, the family withdrew from that agreement. And Mrs Nadrasa, the mother, then lodged further legal appeals. Both subsequent legal appeals have now failed. There have been claims repeated in the media that their children, two girls, born in Australia, are Australian citizens. That is false. Australian law says that children of illegal maritime arrivals, even if born onshore in Australia, take on the visa status of their parents. So in this case, under the Migration Act, both girls are determined to be illegal maritime arrivals and not Australian citizens. Recently, an Australian court upheld this law in relation to the eldest child. But because the younger child was not a party to that legal action, the activists are trying it on again with the younger child, now the family's last hope to stay in Australia after the courts, and let me say it again, have rejected the parents seven times and the case for the older child too. Now, I understand why good people want this family to stay. They've settled into Biloela, a community in central Queensland, very well. Dad's working locally, Mum contributes too, and in the way that country towns tend to do better than anywhere else, this family has now been welcomed into the social fabric of Biloela. But no one gets to come to Australia illegally on a boat run the gauntlet of our legal system, get knocked back and then stay. To do otherwise breaches the very fundamentals of our border protection regime that the coalition has only managed to put back together again after the onslaught by people smugglers and Kevin Rudd and 50,000 illegal arrivals during Labor's years in office. If we start bending the rules, we send a message to people smugglers, you just wear down the legal system here, delay long enough to have children in Australia and therein lies your ticket to stay. There is nothing to stop this family returning to Sri Lanka and applying to come like everyone else the right way. And if they did that, I'd have to say I'd support them coming because they're prepared to live in outback Queensland and contribute. They're the sort of immigrants we want. There's nothing to stop the father's employer from sponsoring him either. But if you give the activists a win here, if there's a new loophole opened up that's different than the law, then we might as well reopen the borders and give the people smugglers back control. That's why the activists are pushing this so hard. That's why Christina Keneally and Labor are doing the same. And that's the facts, not what others are telling you.